guys, as I'm sure you've heard by now, Syria is the new face of the war on terror. Since the Syrian uprising began, over 70,000 people have tragically lost their lives, while millions of others have been displaced. Now, for the last two years, the U.S. government and corporate media have been mostly silent on Syria, until the last few months, when the narrative took a significant turn. The broader point is, is that once we establish the facts, uh, I have made clear that the use of chemical weapons is a game changer. The president said the use of chemical weapons against the Syrian people would constitute a red line. Basically saying that the red line will have been met once there is full and corroborated proof and evidence. President Obama has talked about red lines. Yes. Do you think Bashar al-Assad has crossed a red line? Not just for one time. Many, many times he crossed the red line. The president has said that, that moving the weapons in any kind of threatening way would be that red line. If Israel is determined to prevent the transfer of chemical weapons or other game-changing weaponry by the Syrian regime to terrorists, especially to Hezbollah in Lebanon. Red line, game changer, chemical weapons, red line, weapons of mass destruction. No, more like a weapon of mass distraction. And no, I'm not saying that Syria should be ignored. What I am saying is that we should all be looking at the bigger picture. First of all, why would chemical weapons be enough of a reason to attack a sovereign nation when the U.S. has consistently used them in modern warfare? Just in the last decade, the U.S. used white phosphorus and radioactive depleted uranium in Iraq, both of which defy international law. But I digress. Back to Syria. Eerily similar to the propaganda run-up to the Iraq war, first came the report of chemical weapons being used. Then came the declaration from the Defense Department that Assad was responsible for using them against civilians. And of course, Obama quickly followed by saying that this would not stand. But if, I, if there's one thing I hope this nation's learned in the wake of the Iraq WMD debacle, it's that when the war drums are being beaten by the media and the government, the people should demand to see the evidence. Well, according to Reuters just yesterday, Independent UN human rights investigators cited that they had not yet seen evidence of the government forces using chemical weapons in Syria. In fact, through their gathered testimony, the evidence suggests that the rebel forces are the ones who use the chemical nerve gas sarin. And as an alternative to both narratives, just today, the Independent International Commission of Inquiry on Syria issued a press release saying it had not reached conclusive evidence of which party is responsible. Here's the deal. Just don't believe everything you see in here because there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Just take a look at the U.S. covert intelligence operations being done on the ground there. You see, the U.S. has been supplying Syria's rebel forces, some of which are affiliated with al-Qaeda, with illegal arms. So, to fight the war on terror, the U.S. government has chosen to align itself with the same terrorist organization it's fighting across the rest of the world. Well, <laughs> You know what they say, one government's terrorist is another government's freedom fighter. Which is especially ironic, considering the news that happened over the weekend. The Syrian capital, Damascus, was rocked by two Israeli airstrikes in which the Israeli government alleges were merely in self-defense to prevent missiles from reaching Hezbollah. Interestingly enough, Hezbollah also supplies arms to Palestinian resistance. Do you see where I'm going with this whole terrorist is in the eye of the, the beholder thing? <laughs> but look. Even if the self-defense argument were true, this is undoubtedly a declaration of war on Syria. And guess what? It's not the first time. Back in January, Israel reportedly bombed another shipment of anti-aircraft missiles in Syria, claimed to be headed to Hezbollah. So this latest offensive seems to be falling perfectly in sync with the latest chemical weapons scare. But think about the even bigger picture. Is intervention ever the answer militarily? Assad using chemical weapons should not be justification to become embroiled in another war for profit. Installing a U.S. puppet to replace Assad is not going to help the Syrian people. After all, peace through force is not peace at all.